Ari Leyendijk, of course, a Dutchman. Teo, uh, Taro Palmroth, probably the best IndyCar driver that Finland has ever produced. Would I get any argument on that, Derek? Day? No, be, be, yeah, definitely the only guy. Keki Rosberg was the only Finnish driver I knew, but look how low he goes at turn two. Right down, almost sticks a wheel in on the grass using every bit of racetrack. Um, that's available as we see a second lap time above 215. Let's uh, reset the fact that this is taped from earlier today. Taro has actually just been out on the racetrack in reality in real time practicing. But this was earlier today. This was qualifying and this was a wild ride. This guy really hung it out. Turn three. We see the graphic on the right side there, 213. That means his speed through that turn was 213. And he dropped off a little bit of speed down to 211 as he came through turn four. Of course, then he accelerates down the front stretch which brings that average speed up a little bit. The key, of course, is a four-lap run here. And, man, he is using it all, all the way down to the grass, all the way up to the wall. I'm not sure I'd want to share the cockpit on a ride like that. Is that a driver who is struggling? Is that a driver who knows this is my shot at doing it? I'm going to hang it out. I'm going to take more chances now than I would all month. I, I think it's a driver hanging it out, taking the last chance. But it also shows a confidence that the driver has in the car because... When a car doesn't feel stable, when you're uncomfortable, you don't dare go as close to the walls as we see Terrell Palmrath as he takes the checkered flag. But he's an unusual situation here because he hardly races during the year, but he gathers up enough sponsorship to go to Dick Simon and say, hey, I want to come to the biggest event in the world, and, I, and he comes back and qualifies at Indy and does a, a very, very good job. Paul Roth has put it in the show at 2.15.6, and that puts him in the middle of row nine. And uh, when it was all over, we had the opportunity to talk to him and find out if that ride was as, re as wild as it looked. Taro, three of your four laps quicker than any time prior in the month of May. Any particular reason why? Well, I, I really am honest. I, I, I don't know why. I have been working, I think, very hard with the car last week. I mean, this week and also this morning. And I couldn't get it over to 10. We made a few changes for the car uh, before qualifying. And, uh, and I think that was really the the key thing to, to go so 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 well now in turn two you went so far under the line i mean it looked like you were almost on the grass getting ready to give it a cut uh how how, how close was it for you well i used to cut grass of my grandfather's you know place so i'm used to that so but i didn't want to go too much there but i wanted to go really low because i wanted to be flat there i knew that if i i must be flat there so i needed to i had little push and uh, so i needed to take the whole racetrack and Next lap by, I softened my front bar so I could make my, my fourth lap again faster. But then I had a little push, so I had to go really, really used all the racetrack. A little push, and push. I think he handled it very, very well. He's in the show. Palm Roth at 2.15.6. The field is the traditional 11 rows of three. We'll start in the back with position 33 and move toward the front. In the 11th row, from the inside out, is Randy Lewis. Pancho Carter, and two-time winner Gordon Johncock. It was just two weeks ago that Gordy was working his farm when he got a call to come and drive the Indy 500. In 1982, he won by 16 one-hundredths of a second, the closest 500 ever. The 10th row is made up of three very persevering men, Roberto Guerrero, Willie T. Ribs, and Dominic Dobson. Dominic crashed hard two weeks ago, chipping a bone in his leg. But the team bought another car, and now with a knee brace on his leg, he's ready for his fourth Indy. History was made when Willie T. Ribs became the first African-American to join the field. In 1987, Roberto Guerrero's engine stalled while leading to give the race to Al Unter. In the ninth row, John Paul Jr. in his third 500, Finland's Taro Pomrod, and Scott Pruitt. It was just a year ago March when Scotty was injured in a testing accident at West Palm Beach, Florida. Since that time, he has been in constant rehabilitation just to prepare to drive in this race. The eighth row has two rookies and a veteran, Jeff Brabham in his ninth race, Buddy Lazier and Hiro Mashusta. Mashusta is the first Japanese to drive in the 500. He relaxes shooting pool. Buddy Lazier is a skier and operates a resort with his Indy driver dad. Jeff Brabham sits in his dad's number 17, the first successful rear engine car from back in 1961. The back four rows have one former winner, three rookies, and the slowest car in the field. 
And we'll meet more of the starting field in just a little bit. Still cloudy over Indianapolis, but the track for the moment is very, very dry. We will start right on time. You know, almost every profession or craft uses a shortcut in language to describe very complex things. Racing is no different. Continuing to look at the fastest field in history. In the seventh row, from the inside to the outside, are Midwesterners Scott Brayton and Tony Bettenhausen. Outside, Mexico's Bernard Jourdain. The sixth row, inside, is Kevin Kogan. In the center of the row is Stan Fox. And outside, the fastest rookie, Mike Groff. Groff loves to restore old cars and old homes in his spare time. Wisconsin's Stan Fox is a top midget racer. And Californian Kevin Kogan drives a Buick today, but he flies his own plane in his other life as a real estate developer. Row five is the fastest in the field with the fastest driver, Gary Bettenhausen, the defending champion, Ari Leyendijk, and the 89 winner, Emerson Fittipaldi. Emmo works out daily. He adds to his health regimen by keeping to a special diet that includes seaweed. Today, he drives a Penske Chevrolet. Ari Leyendijk won the first race of his career here last year, earning a million dollars. Now the man from Holland is able to pursue his second love by opening an art gallery. Ari drives the number one Lola Chevrolet. Gary Bettenhausen lives in rural Indiana. His family has dreamed of an Indy win for two generations. Today is his best chance in the number 51 Lola Buick. special moment of these drivers move now toward joining their teams and cars. Ten wins have come from the first row of rows in the 500 as we continue our look at the starting field. The front four rows all qualified on the first day of time trials. In the fourth row, on the inside is Eddie Cheever, Jeff Andretti in the center, and Canadian Scott Goodyear to the outside. With the addition of Mario's younger son, Jeff, plus Michael and their cousin, John, 12% of this field are named Andretti. Eddie Cheever sweated the last month here in Indianapolis preparing for this race. His wife, Rita, chose instead to stay at their Monaco home, but she's here today to watch him drive in Chip Ganassi's number eight Lola Chevrolet. In the third row, on the inside, John Andretti, Jim Crawford in the center, Danny Sullivan to the outside. In 1985, Danny Sullivan spun and then won his first Indianapolis 500. He is a modern man of many personalities. The real Danny Sullivan will start this race in the number 20 Alfa Romeo, driving for the Pat Patrick Racing Stable. Last year, Jim Crawford took flight in practice here. The transplanted Scotsman still limps from a crash in qualifying in 1987 that forced him out of racing for a year. But Jim is back, driving again for drag racer Kenny Bernstein in a Lola powered by Buick. John Andretti and his father Aldo share a love of racing history. Aldo is Mario's twin brother. John won his first IndyCar race in March, driving the Lola Chevy for the Hall VDS team. 14 winners have come from the second row. Today inside is Bobby Rahal, then Michael Andretti, and Al Unser Jr. outside. Little Al is an avid outdoorsman. The defending PPG Cup champion is the sole representative of the Unser clan today. He drives a Lola Chevrolet. This may be Michael Andretti's last 500. He began testing for the McLaren Formula One team this year, and if he has his way, he'll drive only in F1 for the next several years. His best finish here is fourth in 1988. He hasn't finished the last two years, but today he drives the Newman Haas Lola Chevrolet. Bobby Rahal is on a fitness campaign, cycling with friends daily. The 1986 500 winner has finished second in every race this year. He carries Maury Crane's blue and yellow livery on his number 18 Lola Chevrolet. 71 Indy 500 starts are in the veteran first row. Pole sitter Rick Mears, four-time winner A.J. Foyt, and Mario Andretti, who drove to victory here in 1969 for Andy Granatelli. A year and a half ago, Mario took up golf as a counterpoint to the tensions of the track. In the last 11 years, the former world champion has only finished twice. He starts in his 26-500 in the Newman Haas Lola Chevrolet. 
Anthony Joseph Boyd Jr., the first four-time winner, a record 67 championship wins, the only man to win here in both front and rear engine cars, the oldest driver in the field at age 56, A.J. starts his number 14 in his 34th straight 500. Away from the track, Bakersfield, California's Rick Mears loves the water. It relaxes him while he plans even greater victories. He starts on the pole for a record six times. But it was just two and a half weeks ago that Rick Mears slammed the first turn wall in the only wreck he's ever had at Indianapolis. Twice in 1979 and 88, he's won from the pole. He starts today driving a Penske Chevrolet. In the front four rows, there are four former winners and four members of the Andretti family. And so appropriately, they all walk out into the pit area together. There's John, his wife, Nancy. Michael and Mario.